if they loved Jones and they were afraid that somebody was going to take him at 15, like the Redskins, they had to take him at six. They just had to. So uh, the argument, it's a twofold argument, guys. Is Jones as bad as people are saying? Is he that much of a project? Or would somebody have taken him before the Giants picked at 17? And if you love the quarterback, and again, Gettleman, in his hy hyperbolic way, I fell in love with the guy. I oh. watched him, whatever. If he really, if he loved the guy, you had to take let's, him with the six. Let's pick. hear how in love Dave Gettleman was. I loved him on film. Absolutely loved him. Loved everything about him. And uh, then I went to the uh, senior bowl. He walked out there, and I saw a professional quarterback. After his, after the three series that I watched, I saw a professional quarterback. So that's when I was in full bloom love. What on earth are you saying, man? This is going to be the third straight uh, time they've taken the Senior Bowl MVP. The Senior Bowl, it makes the Pro Bowl look like the uh, the conference finals of the NBA. Like, they're not playing hard. That's when you fell in love? Yeah, Webb what? and Loletta were not taken with the sixth overall pick. Got it. But there is a pattern here with the Giants that's strange. But, but, but again, we get caught up because Gettleman's captivating in, in the things that he says because he's all over the place. Okay? I'm in love. I was in full But balloon. actions speak louder than words. I don't need him to tell me that he's in love with the guy when you take him sixth overall. That pick tells me that you're in love with a guy. So we can question well, he, he, whether he done. should be or not, Michael, but he can say what he wants and he's going to sit for three years. All the stuff that he throws at you because I think he just loves teasing the media and driving us crazy, really. But at the end of the day, actions speak louder than words. He took him at six. So he obviously believes this is the next great quarterback. This is not the second, third, or fourth round. This is the sixth overall pick. He doesn't have to tell us he loves him. The pick tells you that. Uh, I'll tell you this, if Mara and Tish hired a guy that has had the game pass him by at the age of 67, they have set this franchise back at least a decade. They, they really have. So you're telling me you love Daniel, Daniel Jones more than you love Sam Darnold. And here's yeah. the thing that really stinks for the Giants. Jones and Darnold now will play alongside each other for the next 10, 12 years. It's going to be right in the Giants' face. Same thing with Dwayne Haskins of the Redskins. They're going to see him twice a year for the next 10 years if the Redskins made the right pick. But the funny part is, at his age, Dave Gettleman's not going to be the GM in 10 years. Not going to be a 77-year-old GM. So the Giants entrusted their whole organization to a guy that they better hope that the game hasn't passed him by. Now, you could argue he made the right pick last year with Saquon. But did he? Yeah, he got an otherworldly running back. But he passed up at least three quarterbacks, three that could be good. And you could make the argument that every quarterback that he passed up is better than Daniel Jones. Well, no, no, and, and every other says, expert would argue that he is so far. Everyone, every, so far, Michael, and again, Don's right. We, well, I'm saying, I'm saying all three that were, they, they passed off. Yes. Because they couldn't take Mayfield. All three are better than Jones. All three, and, and maybe, and maybe two from this year. Yeah. So we're going to be comparing them to about five, six quarterbacks. Right, yeah, and, and I'm glad you said that because I don't want to hear the spin that he's only um, compared to the quarterbacks in the 2019 draft. No, no. You had an opportunity at two to take a quarterback. So all the quarterbacks you've passed on over the last two years, you're saying this is the guy. It could have been any of the quarterbacks over the last two years, but this is the guy. And you could say, well, listen, Barkley was just too good. But even Gettleman himself said, I don't want to be in quarterback hell. That's the worst place to be. Nobody ever says, I don't want to be in running back hell. It's quarterback hell. So you chose the, court, the running back over the quarterback. So I, so I have to believe you didn't think any of those quarterbacks were the next big thing. So and, now and you also believe Jones is. Now he, he can be proven right. And that doesn't matter that he's 67 or could be out of a job. This is all he's going to be remembered for. Nobody's going to care yep. about the Barkley pick. Nobody's going to care that he was the GM on the losing Panther team. He's going to be the guy that took Jones when all these other quarterbacks become great. Or one of the quarterbacks that were ahead of Jones is great. And right, in your home building, if Sam Darnold turns out to be the next great quarterback and Jones turns out to be the second coming of Dave Brown, that's all Gettleman will ever be remembered for. It's also pretty dangerous. To, I mean, I think they fell in love with the story. All right, the guy's a Manning clone. 
Um, Gil Brandt, you said this yesterday, Don, so let's give credit. A lot of people respect Gil Brandt. He compares him to a young Peyton Manning. He worked at the Man Manning Passing Academy. He went to Duke. He was coached by David Cutcliffe. David Cutcliffe was Peyton Manning's quarterback coach at Tennessee, Eli Manning's coach at Ole Miss. So I think they put together all these puzzle pieces. Cutcliffe said this guy's going to play 15 years and he's going to win championships. We shall see. There are a lot of reputations on the line. Again, I defend the Giants. If they loved them that much, you have to take them at six. You can't gamble that he'd be there at 17. But they might have been alone in their love. It might have been, you know what it might be? Peter, you'll like this uh, take. It might be, It might have been a case of shallow how. They might be the only people that think he's great. It, it's, it's, and, if, and if that's the case, th let me ask you a question. Because Don, Don is, Don's trying his best to just live in a world where in a world Gettleman's not just out of his mind and I appreciate that but does this turn out to be this this is one of two things either Daniel Jones is an absolute NFL stud who takes over for Eli Manning sometime late this season or next season or whatever it is and becomes a franchise quarterback or is this truly the ultimate sign of the end of Dave Gettleman, that he's gotten everything wrong. What's the more What's the more likely thing? In your heart, what do you think is going to happen? Is Daniel Jones I think, I, an I, NFL stud? Oh, uh, just going off everything that the people we spoke to and guys that we respect, like Todd McShay and and Mel Kiper, you have to say he's not an NFL stud. But maybe they're wrong. They've been wrong before. Hey. Remember, Ryan Leaf was the second pick in the draft. Absolutely. It's, it's happened many so, times. Yeah, you, will find, yeah, and you will find articles of people asking if Leaf was better than Manning. And again, we're, we live in a world where Joe Montana was a third-round pick. Russell Wilson was a third-round pick. Terrell Davis at running back was, was a seventh-round pick. I mean, you know, Tom Brady, you look at the ultimate quarterback in this league, where he was drafted. All right, so there are times they get it wrong. All I'll say is he has to get it right. This has to be the key. Even, Peter, even if he succeeded... Even if the Giants made the playoffs last year, even if they got it right that they could have been a playoff team and make some sort of a run, and they draft Jones and he turns out to be a bust, that's what you're remembered for. When you take a quarterback at six, it has to work out. If not, it destroys you. It destroys reputations. It does. You can't get up from that. So, so, this, so he has his... Don't, we can talk you about you know, the Mel Kuypers of the world and the Adam Schefters of the world. We could be right, we could be wrong, and then it's forgotten about the next day. Literally, his entire career, this pick is what he's going to be remembered for. And, and so he believes in it, so you we'll don't find, find out if he's right or wrong. And real quick, yeah, if I'm overstating this and being a fool, that's fine. We all know I am a fool. And it's not weird to you that the guy who he, he really put his entire reputation on the line for to grab at six, he fell in love with after the senior bowl. Well, no, that's it's not just strange. No, but he said he, he was in love with he him on film. He also liked the, the he said, tape, yeah. He I said, I'm in love with him on film, and then... When he I talked saw him, about, and I, and I saw him but in I do, senior bowl. and again, I feel like I'm defending. I'm not defending. You are. You're getting close, Don. I'm tr again. I, I could be the talk show host like everybody else in this town and scream moron, no, 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 fire you know what? him, fraud. and then three you're years from you're being a fraud right now. He called Michael. Did Don not call you out for having a lukewarm opinion two days ago about the um, about Damian Lillard? True, but I, I'm I not dying on this hill. But no, you either got to die on the hill or not, Don. No, no, no I'm not going to die I, on the hill of saying no. that the guy's a moron. I'm sorry, I'm not a shock jock who's going to tell you so then, that so the guy that's an NFL good. general manager so say you're not, is, is out of his mind. So say they did a good job last night. So they did a good no, job if, last if he night. He believes in the. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with Michael. If you believe that this is the next great franchise quarterback, you have to take, him, you at have to take him at six. I don't know what Jones is going to be. So we have to punt if on. The, a, we have to punt for a year, basically. And well, then I'm sorry. So, so you I'm gonna call for three years. Wait a second. So I'm supposed to call him a moron like everybody else. There's something wrong with the guy. He's a saboteur. And then three years from now, if Jones turns out to be the next Tom Brady, so never we're, we're, I, I never said that. There's a guy who's really successful. No, who does I'm sorry. It every day. That's fine. You could be successful that way. I, I, I just don't think morons on the table. I don't think he could be wrong. But you're telling me that he's lost his mind? No. That the Giants organization has lost their... I don't think anybody, even during the Jets' dysfunction, even when Mel Kuyper said the Colts didn't know what they were doing, I never think morons on the table. You could get it wrong, <laughs> and he'll lose his job if he gets it wrong. I just said his entire legacy will be destroyed if he gets this wrong. And I don't think... So my, let's see what Jones turns out to be. I don't think morons on the table either. But I do think you can say that no matter how you cut it, 
it does not appear that they handled this correctly last night. They did not read the room properly.